14, 2016 of this year, our two youngest sons were involved in an automobile accident. We first got the phone call. Daniel had called. He was crying. I couldn't understand him. We lost contact. After that, his best friend called Isaac that was in the car with him also. He uh, was also crying. I couldn't make out what he was saying. We lost contact three times. So the sheriff calls us back. Says your boys have been in a very serious automobile accident. Um, Daniel and Isaac were able to get out of the car. Kyle was not able to. Kyle was trapped. In the Bible, it talks about there being a tension in Psalms 42. Uh, a person going through difficult situations. And it talks about being distressed and disquieting situations, disheartening situations. And the psalmist says in there, Yet I will praise the Lord again, hope in God. That when we go through difficult times, there's this tension for the Christian, and they have to make a conscious decision to hope in God. Not hope in anything else, but hope in God. So hope is that confident expectation that God's going to come through, and He's going to honor His Word. I thought we understood everything about the Lord. And, but we also realize that when tragedy comes, uh, all those things are put to a test. And as I'm looking through my phone, I look and I see that I had three, several text messages actually, and several missed calls. And I'm like, what in the world is this? And so uh, one of the text messages told me that uh, Daniel, Isaac, and Kyle had been in a pretty bad car accident and were being lifeline. We had retreated Daniel on my side and we spun back around and we had a concrete culvert that hit Kyle's side and Kyle got shot in the back with me and then we hit again and then we rolled to the other side of the road. I remember getting to the accident and got out of the car. I could see the car as I pulled onto the road and I knew it was really bad. Um, so I went up there and I stood. They wouldn't let us go see Kyle or Daniel um, or Isaac. All we could see was um, rescue vehicles, fire trucks, things like that. We couldn't see the vehicle at the time we arrived there. So I looked at Kyle and I honestly thought Kyle was dead sitting in the seat. He wasn't moving, there was blood everywhere. It just didn't look good. When I looked at that text message, there just overwhelming emotion uh, just came over me because you have such young, promising uh, men um, about to, ready, set to do great exploits for God, and they have their whole future ahead of them. And you're kind of like, well, why all of a sudden would this uh, happen? There wasn't a whole lot of information. So, I mean, the feeling that I had was pretty blank. I didn't know what to feel because I didn't know what was going on. You know, at that moment, we couldn't see Kyle. We didn't know if he was alive. Uh, we couldn't hear or see him move at all. The whole time, I was, I mean, I was screaming. I was yelling. And then I dropped down to a knee, and I started praying, just asking God if he'd watch over Kyle and everything, just make sure he's okay. And I can remember asking the Lord just to give me a sign. And as they were starting to move him, I actually heard him cry out in pain. That was kind of a real bittersweet sound. One, I knew he was alive. And two, um, I knew he was hurting. He was back in the room and Kyle was still like coming in because he hadn't made it there yet, so it was just kind of unknown. I do know that this, when we first arrived there, the, the doctors were giving us really no hope for Kyle at that time. So at that time, after they got him moved up to ICU, he had every mission you could imagine to put up to him. They put it in on him. Um, he had to have a a lot of medications, a lot of IV lines, dialysis. He was in bad shape. We didn't know if we was going to come home with our child or not. The next 29 days was spent in ICU. They gave us a 2% chance that he would ever walk again, talk again. 
or be any kind of a functional person at all. I woke up in the middle of the night when I did fall asleep and I was screaming for Kyle. And then after that, I didn't sleep. It really helped praying and getting through things. That, that night in the hospital, I know I would have absolutely lost it. I always remember asking each one, each person that came into the room, uh, how's Kyle, how's Isaac, have you heard anything about him? Uh, everybody told me that, you know, they're okay. Uh, Kyle was in surgery at that point. As I pulled out of our driveway and pulled onto the main road there, all of a sudden this peace just overcame me in the car. And um, my mind went to Isaiah 40 and verse 31. As I was laying there in the hospital bed, uh, my youth pastor, Juan, he came by my bedside and he read me a verse, it was Isaiah 40, 30-31, and how it came to him, uh, we may never know, he may never know, but it was just so fluently and it was so direct to the point to where it definitely brought a peace. I know that God's in control. You gotta hang on to that. God's in control. I can recall looking over at my wife and saying, I don't feel God. I don't hear him. I don't feel his presence. Everybody hopes in something. Sometimes we hope in our job, we hope in our spouse, we hope in our career, we hope in our education, we hope in our family tree. We hope in something. But the question is, is where does your true hope lie? A peace and a joy and a hope came over us. Um, that was beyond all understanding. We knew at that point that we had to give Kyle to the Lord. I mean, just by like all the little things that he did with you know, all of Kyle's little movements and um, just like, just seems for Christian and how everybody else was working around us. And... Every night at 9 o'clock, there in the waiting room of the ICU, we had prayer with all the families that were there. And after 29 days, it had grown to 40 people. And there were families coming from other waiting rooms. And we've seen miracles happen. We've seen things happen that we don't, couldn't even imagine. Uh, once I was released uh, from my room, I began to uh, wander to the waiting room where Kyle's room was at. And we were sitting in there. And uh, it was not only just our family. There was a really big waiting room. There was a probably about, I'd say probably about four or five families in there. And one girl was just sitting out in the corner and I just really felt like I was led to go and uh, at least say a word of encouragement to her, maybe uh, pray with her or at least give her some food that we were having that day. Uh, her name was Nedra and her uh, husband was in the hospital, his name was Scott, and he had a severe heart attack. I remember being up in the trauma ICU and we're getting ready to leave for the evening and we all gathered to pray. There's probably about 10 of us getting ready to pray and we're just praying for God just to move in Kyle's situation and God to move in the rest of the hospital. And I turn and I look and I'm wondering where Daniel is and Daniel's over already praying with people that were in the waiting room there. That was an awesome experience. After I would go back and see Kyle and I'd say goodnight to him and tell him I loved him. Uh, I would go to visit her husband, his name was Scott, and she would be in there, and I'd grab his hand, I'd grab her hand, and we'd have prayer, and that continued uh, the whole uh, two months we were in ICU, and it was, it was definitely an experience. When you look at it, God brought Isaac out of this situation with just some scrapes, some bumps, and some bruises. He brought Daniel out of the situation with some scrapes, some bumps, and some bruises. Why in the world would he not bring Kyle out of this situation either? Every time I was on my treadmill, I was praying. Um, I, it was unbelievable. Like, I'd be in the car or or thinking about something else, and, and Kyle would come in my, my, my mind, and I'd think, I'd stop and pray. I mean, you don't have to close your eyes, but you just, you know, pray. Uh, Lord, whatever Kyle's going through right now, you, you're, you know what's going on, and, and he needs your help. 
the nurse then came out and got us and said, you need to come and see, you need to come and see what's going on. We got in there and his eyes were just wide awake. And uh, we knew right then that the Lord gave him back to us. Yes. Tara was sitting in the chair beside me in the bed and all of a sudden I woke up. My eyes were a little bit wider than they usually are. And Tara came over there and usually she rubs my arm to put me back to sleep. Well, instead of doing that, she put her hand in my hand and said, squeeze my hand. Well, when she said that, I guess my eyes like busted open and I started squeezing her hand a lot tighter than those. And I, how I remember it is everybody was, or she was crying when I done that. And uh, she ran out there and got a nurse. And dad goes, okay. So what I want you to do is turn over and give Tara a wink. So I winked at Tara. And, I, and then Dad said, turn over and give Mom a wink. So I leaned my head over and I winked at my mom. I was, I was pretty frustrated most of the time until they got that uh, trach out of my throat. Uh, I hated not being able to talk. Uh, it was hard to tell them what I wanted at the time. I remember dad telling me a story about how I wanted water really bad. Mm. So what I'd done was I started signing out stuff and I was like, I started doing H, two, O. And he said he couldn't understand it. It took him two days to understand what that was. And I know that was really frustrating for me because I wanted something to drink so bad. But The hope that he's given me that I'll get better is so much better than it used to be because I know that I used to have no hope whatsoever, like whether I was going to get out of the wheelchair or the walker or, or the cane, was I ever going to get off that? And I always told myself no, but God thought different, obviously, and he said, no, I want to get you off that walker, I want to get you off that cane, I want to get your feet moving again and everything you've done. just." Keep it up and stay strong. Over you know, the time that he was in there, he just got to see like God work through him. I mean, he just healed him. I know personally that my relationship with the Lord has grown stronger. And as pastor and pastor's wife, we've always been on the other side of a tragedy and reassuring the families of hope and peace and joy that God can give. And we believed all that, but until you experience it, until you experience the true hope and those attributes of God, um, it's hard to even realize how good that is. Keep the faith, definitely. I mean, you may not feel like God's there at times, and I've, I've had those times before, but I just kept pushing through them and pushing through them. I know before this I wasn't a very godly man. And, uh, I see now that I need God in my life and I know that you guys will need God too. To date, he is uh, walking without a walker, without a cane. And keep in mind the doctor said that only 2% chance that he would even be able to get out of that bed. My relationship with Kyle, uh, Still hasn't changed. I mean, he's still the same Kyle that he was. Uh, he still jokes around. We give each other hard times all the time. Uh, but as a whole and as a one of a family coming together, I don't think I've ever experienced anything like that before. Keep praying a lot, and whatever you do, just don't give up and put God first. Yep, have faith in him. Kyle was taken off the sedation and the paralytic at the time. And the nurse walked in and uh, she said, Kyle, can you raise your left arm for me? And sure enough, he just raised his left arm as high as he could. And he started lifting his left leg and his right leg and he's trying to get up and she goes, okay, Kyle, calm down, buddy, calm down. And I, I didn't have any words to say. I, I was speechless. I was in awe of God's hand upon Kyle. It was definitely life-changing. It was an experience that I'll never forget. Um, 
seeing my brother lay there in, in the ICU with a tube down his throat and helping him breathe and um, definitely a experience. Um, but the hope that God provided, I'm, I'm telling you, if you don't think there's any hope in any situation, there's definitely hope. If I could take it all back, would I do it? No, I would never take that all back because he put me in that situation for a reason. I asked him for a story and he gave me a story and I believe that whatever he does in my life and whatever he wants to do in my life, he has control of it.